Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. I am here today with day number 24 of Defemerember. This is working with the paper clips and fabric. So this is um, a December daily that is hosted by 49 Dragonflies and Louisa Heinzel, whom I have linked below in the description box. So let's just jump right into our second last day. So I have pulled a few things here. Um, I have a couple projects that I think will be a little bit quick. So let's just start with the first one. So I was thinking about making, um, you know, the fabric kind of the, the centerpiece of this piece. So I'm thinking about making a fabric flip. If you're not familiar with what that is, it's a piece of fabric that lays down on your page and let's say it's attached at the top and you can flip it up and you can do some journaling underneath here. And it's just a beautiful thing to be in a journal. So, um, this is my eco printed fabric, um, that has appeared in earlier episodes here. Um, this is, um, printed with a gallnut um, uh, tannin on, on a mordant and um, I forget what these long leaves were. I completely forget. The speckly ones though were birch um, and there were also some vines of strawberry that kind of whipped across them. So I was thinking about how I wanted to make this and essentially I think I want to use this side it's got the more green to it and it has this kind of straight ish edge so I was thinking about how much I just love yellow and gray together and I think I just really want to add this sunflower here like you know a first hopeful kind of um, plant after the winter so I think what I want to do though is I need to make it a little less um, wide a little thinner so I think probably about right here is where I would want that to be so I'm just going to trim this way first and just tear that off this is just an old cotton napkin that someone had embroidered on um, so that's that direction then I want to keep this a nice stitched edge I think so then let's just see again where we would want to clip that probably about right here and we'll just clip that little bit of thread okay so now I'm going to glue this down using some Fabri-Tac to just secure it on there I feel like today's projects are a little bit more simplistic after a couple of more heavier technique projects, but in a, in a way that's a good thing because it shows you like you can, you can do simple things that are beautiful. You don't have to make every piece of ephemera take like hours to create. <laughs> Probably should be gluing on some other surface, but it's fine. I'm just going to support the leaves as much as I can here to just tighten this up to the corner that I want it in and then straighten it out, straighten it all out. Okay, and then we still need a paper clip for this. And what it got me thinking about is how I never even thought about, like, you know, so with um, with a fabric flip, I typically will just stitch or glue the top to, you know, the page, and that's about it. I'll probably layer a few fabrics on this one. I'm not going to because I just want this sunflower and these beautiful leaves to be like the star of the show. But what's stopping me? So I forgot to talk about my paper clips. So in my journals, I primarily do two things. I use vintage brass paper clips or I buy 
you know, common paper clips and I actually rust them myself. You can rust paper clips by putting them in vinegar. Um, you can speed that process up a little bit by adding a bit of salt and a bit of water um, and just let them sit for about a week or so. Um, just keep in mind anything they come into contact with they can also rust if it's something that can rust so I'd recommend keeping them like in a glass bowl or something that you don't use for food um, and yeah you will get rusty paper clips so on this one what I will do is I'm going to use my rusty paper clips here also they will definitely mark paper that you clip them onto just remember that because if it's something that will be you know a problem you don't want to do that so I'm just going to clip these two on to the fabric here, right over top of the paper, and they are well secured. So at this point, they're not so much functional as just, you know, decorative and fun, and they like add an element of like, you know, papery kind of like paper goods to this project. So, you know, imagine this is stitched down, you know, you've got your writing space under here, and these are just here to be like decorative. And so I thought that was a fun way to use a paper clip as something other than, you know, specifically functional. Also in the journal, it could be functional because someone could decide, you know, they want to clip something to the front of their belly band and they could do that. Not a, not a problem at all. So this is my first piece, very simple belly band, or not belly band, <laughs> fabric flip. Okay, now the second one, I'm going to incorporate a couple of things. So I had debated using this fabric on wax, our wax day, because this is actually batik fabric that I made myself. If you watched my batiking video, or my um, my wax video from um, day 21, um, you would have seen me working with wax, and I had pulled out like a wooden, um, a long wooden tool that had like a round end. So that's what this is. So the way that I created this fabric was, this is just um, a cotton muslin and um, heated up the wax dipped the tool in and blah 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 you know just the whole thing laid it down um, then I folded it all up and I put it in blue dye and let it you know dye it was um, this was alum treated cotton so and the dye was um, a fabric uh, dye like um what is the word that I'm looking for um, uh, a, a reactive I'm sorry a fiber reactive dye so that's the kind of dye that you want to use um, when you're dyeing natural fibers like cotton not wool but like um, you know plant-based fibers you want a fiber reactive dye so then I, I washed it um, then in order to get the wax out there's a few different things you can do so older industrial style batiking people actually use kind of harmful things like say kerosene to take the wax out don't do that it's very dangerous um, you can get an old towel and you can iron the wax out onto the old towel and um, you can also boil the fabric which is what I do um, I boil the fabric to get all the wax melted away but then you've got to think about where that wastewater goes do not dump it down your sink because you will clog your, your drain do not dump it anywhere environmental because you don't want to add that wax to the environment um, I also use beeswax because it's not a petroleum product so um, what I end up doing is um, I actually dump it into a cardboard box all the wax will stick to the cardboard the water will run through it into the ground um, and then I'm left with just a waxy piece of cardboard which I actually could reuse if I wanted to but I don't I usually just um, toss it so all of that said um, you then have this fabric that most if not all the wax is out of you can boil it a few times if you're really trying to get the wax out if it's for a garment this I would say is probably 90% wax free because I actually left a little bit I, I could have boiled it one more time to get it fully out but I wanted the little bit of stiffness that it offers because I knew I was using this for some kind of an art project so all the blabbing aside um, what I see when I look at this is the moon and also like a cool winter. So that's how I want to use this piece, this, this piece um, in this journal. So I want to create just a couple of um, paper clips that are going to be like um, altered paper clips and they will have a bit of a moon theme to them. 
So I'm going to just clip out a couple of these. I'll just um, make a little cut here. I'll see if I can tear this muslin um, without tearing into another of the circles. It's a little tricky. Okay, that one's fine. Then I'll grab one more. I'm just going to cut it just a little easier. Okay, so we have two of these moon type shapes. Then what I will do to make my altered paper clip is um, I will use this as a base, this piece of paper here. Actually, not that one. I'll use this one because you're not going to see what's underneath. Um, so then you clip your paper clip onto your paper like this. And the idea is it will be double sided and it, everything... Um, this and this will be hidden and whatever you slide in between here is where your paper clip will hold on. So what I like to do with altered paper clips is just think about it's a collage that can exist on both sides um, and I don't want to make it too enormous. So I'm actually going to use the same um, paper on both sides and it will be this handmade paper. Art glitter glue I think is clogged a little here. Oops, come here. I think I need to get the big pin. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Slide that there, and then again on the back. Now, on this one, um I think I will probably just glue this moon with some Fabri-Tac. Oh, I'm going to need to cover the whole thing underneath. I totally forgot that Fabri-Tac can leave like um its mark through the paper, so or through the uh, fabric rather, it will darken the image up a little bit. So we'll just do that so that it it kind of is a little more even. We'll see how it looks like when it dries. So now I'm just going to tear around this and I'm purposely going to leave a little bit of the text from the book. Now that's a little sticky. I'm just going to set it aside. I'm just trying to decide, maybe I want to have a moon on either side. That might be kind of cool. Hmm. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, there we go. Now, set that aside. And then I'm going to use the rest of this paper or maybe, hold on. Something else that might be fun to do instead of doing another one of those is to use the paper clip like kind of like a um, something to hold like a banner, maybe. Tear this off, this bit of fabric, um, plunk it through here, as so, and then maybe another one that we could layer on top. OK, 
Okay, I'm just going to throw a stitch in there really fast. One minute. So that's a quick and easy way to make like a cool um, like banner and I think yeah this is still potentially still functional no it's not because it's yeah it's you're not gonna be able to slide paper past the fabric okay so this would be able to be attached in some way um, maybe with a bulb pin or uh, something else that you could um, you know when you're making your ephemera this is just like kind of a decorative piece and you could add something else to it like um, words or in my case to tie it together I'm actually going to use one of those little gold leaves that you've probably seen me use several times if you've been following me on this uh, challenge I'm actually going to use one of those and then you know I have a lot of options with what I could do with this um if we pretend this is a journal page, you know, I could hand stitch it on here. I could, um, you know, create a piece of ephemera. So if this is a piece of ephemera, um, I could, you know, attach it here with glue or whatever. But I think what I want to do is when, when my journal is finished, I want to use this just as like a little embellishment piece. So that's a nice way to just create like a little banner of something that is, you know, within the theme. So this should be, that's still quite wet actually. Fabri-Tac takes a very long time to dry, but I want to show you essentially what it will look like if we can. Yeah, we can. Okay. It's not that wet. So this is what it will look like. I'll probably hang it, um, the top once it's dry it's not you're not going to see the weird discoloration of the wet glue that does go away um, so yeah that's what it will look like hanging there and it's going to look like a moon on both sides so let me see if I can just dry this just give me two minutes and see if we can show you the final one Okay, so it's all dry now, and I would say that the coloration is a little lighter now. It's not so gluey looking. So here is what it will look like. You just, this is your opening, and you will just pop it on here like so, and it will be um, an altered paper clip to hang on to a piece of ephemera you could stick in there, you know, on your page, um, use your ephemera like that. Um, then the only other thing I was thinking about with this piece was some sort of, um, like if we had, good night, that's cute, but way too big, some kind of word or something. Hmm. This is the kind of thing you need to plan ahead when you're making a video. Here's one. It began to grow dark. Perfect. And I'm also going to use Fabri-Tac to attach that on just because. It began to grow dark. And that will just kind of um, make you think a little bit about this being a moon. And both sides, we will see the moon because we made it a double side. So I don't know if I could find something else. Am I just getting, am I just getting like sassy now that I think I can just quickly pull something out of here? I might be before afternoon. No, darker and darker. Ha ha ha. Every now and then things cooperate with me. I think this is a sign that my last and final video for this series is going to be a semi-disaster. I got overconfident. You see, this is what happens. Okay, darker and darker. And honestly, that kind of that kind of goes together, right? It began to grow dark, and then it was darker and darker until there was just blackness. 
Okay, so I'm happy with this little bit. This is fun, a fun little piece. So um, we did three things. I plan to do two, but I've done three. Um, I don't think any of them are super complicated, but I'm happy with them as a little collection. Again, I, I like this fun little creating these little collections, these little things that we can tie together. Um, I think that this whole challenge has been making me think a little bit about the recipe for creating a journal. Um, and I'm thinking I may work a little more with prompts. Like I've, I've done many prompts. I've created prompts for other groups that I was been a part of in the past. I used to do it all the time in my art yarn spinning group on Ravelry. Um, when I was very into spinning, which I still am, but my time is split between this and that and other things now. Um, but yeah, I, I have a feeling like I'm going to continue along the lines of working this way a little bit. Maybe I may even come up with some of my own prompts and share them if that's something that would interest anyone or not I'll do it anyways because I am okay being a lone wolf if I must be <laughs> though I very much like to have community instead so these are my little bits for today and I hope this was fun for you and that you're having fun with this challenge we only have one day left and like I'm happy but I'm also kind of sad because I really I think this is so fun. I, I had joked on one of Barbara's videos, like, can we just keep doing this and call it like Defemerember Forever Ever or something? Because I know people are already struggling with just saying like Defemerember. So yeah, we are finished for the day. And I thank you once again. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel and you've had fun here, please subscribe. Hang out with me. It'll be a lot of fun, I promise. And um, I will see you tomorrow for our final day. Take care. Bye for now. Bye.